I'm with you today as part of the Clock Chronicles, and I will be talking about women's cardiovascular disease, sort of touch briefly on what we know, and then develop the future of where we need to go with this field. Over the past two decades, we have seen a significant improvement overall in death rates from cardiovascular disease in women and men. However, there is one group in which we've actually seen stagnation or in fact a slight uptick in risks of death from heart disease and that's young women with myocardial infarction or heart attack. We know that women under the age of 50 who have a heart attack experience nearly twice the risk of dying during the first hospitalization as do men. The disparities in care for women with heart disease also extend beyond the differences we see with heart attack. We know that women that have heart failure are less likely to be prescribed medications that can save their lives. Also devices, women are less likely to get ICDs or to undergo CRT or cardiac resynchronization, despite the slight improvement in heart function that's seen in women as compared to men who receive cardiac resynchronization devices. We also know that women are less likely to be prescribed DOAX or the new novel anticoagulants for atrial fibrillation as compared to men. And yet we know women with atrial fibrillation are more likely to have disabling stroke. So we need to recognize these disparities, drill down to the cause of the disparities and develop an action plan to address these in our clinical practices. Another area where we've seen emerging and worsening numbers is maternal mortality or women dying from uh, childbirth or in the peripartum and postpartum period. And the single most common cause today for these deaths is cardiovascular disease. That includes heart failure, most commonly peripartum cardiomyopathy, heart attack for, from a various number of causes, including spontaneous coronary artery dissection and coronary embolism, but also stroke, is another reason and uh, worsening heart failure and sudden death. So we really need to look at why women are experiencing these increased cardiovascular events in the peripartum period and again, address them directly. Many of the women affected by peripartum cardiovascular deaths are in fact women who have experienced disparities in care after the delivery of their children. And many of these women are in fact likely to experience these events because of poor self-education of cardiac symptoms, but also poor provider recognition of the increased risk of young women for having cardiovascular events after delivery. We also know that pulmonary embolus is another common reason for a woman to experience cardiovascular collapse or compromise in the peripartum period. And we want not only patients as well as providers to be aware of the symptoms that can go along with heart attack, heart failure, pulmonary embolus, or stroke, even in young, previously healthy women. Finally, we recognize that there are disparities in the research that's done to address cardiovascular disease. Women are less likely to be recruited for studies, and they're less likely to stay in studies. So we really need to think about the way we design clinical trials so that we can engage more women and women across the age range to be involved in the studies and to stay in studies. We also know that women are less likely to participate in cardiac rehab after experiencing a new diagnosis of heart failure or coronary artery disease, such as heart attack or revascularization. And uh, cardiac rehab is a life-saving type of program which allows women to reduce their long-term cardiovascular risk after their first event. And we certainly want women and their providers to recognize the importance of referral to cardiac rehab in a timely fashion. We hope that you'll be able to join us on October 7th of this year for the NATF forum, which will address a multitude of issues relating to cardiovascular disease in women. At that time, we will discuss many of the nuances of cardiovascular care across the age spectrum, and we look forward to having you join us then. Mm -hmm.